couple weeks ago because, like I said, that video got uh, corrupted. My phone is like so old, it's not working good anymore. But so, some of the things we talked about a couple weeks ago was that you hadn't had a seizure since November 8th. Yep. Which is pretty remarkable, right? Yep. You did have like one little incident. Yep. That guy spit mud out of his tires. I know. wasn't a seizure because I was, I was exhausted. Right. And I didn't sleep good for like four days and I was skating every day and I had heat stroke. And I wasn't drinking water for four days. Right, right. Yeah, so is that, is that helping you? 
it slows me down. It's, uh, I used to vape 12 nick, now I'm at 6 nick. That's the nicotine content? Yeah. Awesome. But that's like, that's like 6 nick and a whole giant 60 nick. Like, alien piss. <laughs> what a funny thing. So, what else? Oh, the other thing we talked about was that you were titrating off your medication. That you've been taking a... Basically, um... My hair's falling out a lot more, though. I noticed that this week. It's just been... It just keeps falling out. You were taking a, You're taking Depakote as a mood stabilizer and seizures even though they're not epileptic seizures so they say so uh i also looked up something Deborah could cause seizures did you know that yeah that's what uh austin's mom said they could cause seizures and yeah. i told her i've been getting off of them and she's like oh that's probably why oh. so it's, it's another theory i mean i'm just saying when i she asked me how i got them i'm like when i was 15 i fell off my bike and hit my head that's one theory when your seizure started. Yeah, because you've been having them since you were 15 and you're almost 22. So you've been having them a really long time. But yeah. And they, and they say they're psychogenic. They're not, they're not epileptic, right? Doctors don't know nothing. Right? But what was another thing that we learned like last week? We went to Houston. And what did we, we learn? We went to the doctor there. 47 chromosomes. Yay! So, yeah, what did what, they tell you? They told me, you guys are all 46 chromosomes and I'm 47. I have everyone's DNA's XY, mine's XYY. Yep. I'm odd. Yeah, so you learned that you had an extra, an extra chromosome. So basically, your, they could have told me that I was special ed when I was like, yeah, <laughs> baby, baby. Like, they could have tested my blood. Oh, look, he has an extra chromosome. He's going to be autistic when he's older. How does that make you feel learning that? Uh, that I got a nasty bruise from the blood. The blood, with the, the blood test. The blood test they took for my extra chromosome. Yeah, because they're going to take another test to look a little bit closer. To see what strain it, or strand it is, because there's 23 of them. Yeah. They can even tell you when the baby is born, they can tell you if it has Down syndrome, that would be a certain, it'll fall into a certain number of category, and then there's like mine is number 47 it's chromosomes, and they're gonna look at that and see what number it is. Now that they know I have an extra chromosome, which they weren't even looking for, it. they weren't even looking for that, and right. it, it popped up. Right. Yep. It was an accident they found it. Well, not really an accident. They weren't looking for anything specific. They were just looking generically, like kind of trying to find a needle in a haystack. Was just such an obvious thing that they saw, so yeah. that I'm autistic <laughs> and well, I could have muscle deficiency. De deficiency. That's what I said. Yeah. Deficiency. Right. Which so so I mean now that you know that, do you, how do you feel? Do you feel like wow, this really validates some of my experience? I was retarded the whole time, and the doctors told me basically. You're not retarded. You were retarded no. in a genius way. You're stupid, but you're not too stupid. The doctors yes. never told you that. That's not true. Well, I mean, I mean, how they say it. So how do you feel, though, now that you have actual genetic proof? Does it make you feel like, oh, that makes sense, or does it, does it matter to you? It doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of cool. I got 47. Yeah. Something to brag about. You got extra. That's awesome. Depakote, and you started out at one point you were at 1750 milligrams, but you weren't on that very long. Oh, that's and, right, then, it's hot. and then you've been down to 1500. I was like, wait, wasn't I taking 1800? No, something like that. Seven, 17, 17, 15. 17, 15, and then you, you they were, tried to put me on 2000, but I was feeling sick. Yeah, and you weren't on 1750 very long at all. Yeah, because it was killing me. Yeah, and then you literally, were, but, the, but you weren't 1500 for a really my long liter, time. My liver was killing me. Yep, a it really was, long time. It was killing my liver. So you've titrated yourself down over the last what nine months? And uh, actually, the doctor, my mom said, "Oh, you should take 750." But then I was like, "I need to challenge myself." 
for some reason the spirits are telling me you need a challenge and I was like you know what I've been thinking about this for a week well that was a few weeks ago but that was like for a few weeks I'm like I'm taking 500 because I've never been to 500 milligrams ever <sighs> they took one whole breath right so you've you've gone down in, in the last nine months from 1500 down to 500 milligrams now so you're almost off of it now I have a friend that, that just call it cold turkey and I now I know what happens when you go to cold turkey you come into you become an emotional wreck so, so yeah so you're almost you're almost off your medications and you're not having seizures and your mood how's your mood how's your mood, how's your mood and stuff been <laughs> look at this it's so poofy yeah, it's, and it's like it does a curl it's like, ooh. how's your mood how's your mood and stuff been um uh, pretty good the sleep's the same different not sleeping good not sleeping good again i mean i got one when i arranged in my room i slept really good that night like right. really awesome it makes me it, and then it's like some days i'll wake up and i'll feel really great and then those other days which is most about 95 percent of the other days will be eh, you don't feel back good. to my normal self I don't like being my normal self. Like I think that's part of the XYY thing that you have. I think fatigue and like that's part of the part of it. It's part of the symptoms of that actually. Yeah. I noticed from me skating so much I'm getting my thighs. You can see the muscles bulge. Oh. So on your skateboard? Yeah, I've been skating so much. My legs are killing me at night. My hips. So the other day you told me you were seeing dead people again. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Austin thought I was joking, but I was serious. And then I thought dad, I thought my dad was standing in my room, and I was like, because I had my headphones on, and I'm listening to a video on YouTube, and I'm like, I can't hear anything. When my if I, someone knocks on the door, I can't hear nothing. So those just usually mom or dad would just walk in and tell me something. But this time I swear someone was standing. I thought dad was standing. Right well, near Dad's my bed. Not dead. Well, yeah, I know that's the weird thing. So it could have been like <laughs> okay. a, another right. reincarnation or a different, a different form uh -huh. of a different reality. When I saw him, I think I, it could have. I swear it was him, but it it looked just like um, and it just stood there. But then when it dis when I looked and I I was so scared, I turned on the light and it just disappeared. Oh. And I was like, wait, what? And when I turned on the light, I'm like, I'm still kind of like, my eyes are burning, I'm still tired, but I'm not tired. It's right. like, you try to sleep, but I can't, you can't, you can't sleep. Yeah. It's just, your bed is full of energy. Every time it's my room, I, it's full of energy. But anyway, um, I see, I see like, apparitions uh, by the door. You know what I'm talking about? Like, going, looking around the corner. Mm -hmm. Like, half the body look like if you like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, I guess. You kind of get, you kind of like have like, kind of have like this look, and you're like, are they like, looking <laughs> around the corner, and you're like, I see you. Are they kind of like misty or dark? No, they're or solid. They? Oh, they're solid. Oh, interesting. They've been solid all week. They so were misty at one point, I mean, in my life. I mean, that's because I was evolving. My, my eyesight's evolving where I, I could see it was first it was just like little white balls to like yep. misty little dead kids and that's yeah I usually saw dead kids yeah and now I'm like seeing full figures anyway some people are psychotic and they do you know need medications because they can't function well in life and then some people are just spiritually attuned and you know they see things in the spiritual realm right but the distinction between the two is can be a very fine line i think it's been increasing since i've been drawing uh, symbols again i've been doing angel speak again okay and i noticed that now now that i think about it that could be the reason why spirits are like showing up they're like oh i know what he's saying because I've been wrong. I've been I, okay. I created. I want. I want a tattoo on my arm or my leg, and I created something and I engulfed. Was it one, two, three? Like four symbols into one symbol, and it's like one giant symbol. Right. You showed me it, and then you told me that's kind of like your. That's my your symbol. symbol, right? Hmm. Oh, Which you is know, really interesting because you you showed me that literally like two days after I came. I back. also. I also Wait. Found, let me tell you. 
I, I went on this last time I got invited to go to a shamanic creativity thing when I went on the weekend. Yeah. And that was one of the things that we did over the weekend was to find our personal symbol and draw it. <clears throat> and like two days after I came back from our that. Our personal symbols all the triangles. But it's just how you look at it. The what? My, my personal symbols is a triangle. Yeah, yours. I'm telling you, I went to that workshop and that was one of the things we did. What was your symbol? Well, I have to show it to you. I drew it in my in my journal. But it wasn't that different than yours, really. It was similar. And then two days later, I didn't even tell you about that. But mine's You're like, like, oh, I drew this personal symbol. And I was like, oh, weird. I, we just did that this weekend. <laughs> it's because we're psychic, psychically linked. Psychically linked. So In some way, right? I don't know. It's freaking weird. It is kind of weird, but it's cool. Yeah. So, so you drew your so you drew your symbol. You've been drawing symbols lately, and you think that's what opening you up, opening your third eye, or what? I mean, my third eye is always stays open. I mean, I don't really close it. I mean, it's uh, it's my solar plexus that's closed because I can't handle it. It's too much. It's too of a high frequency for me. I can't handle my solar plexus. Remember, I had a seizure when uh, when I was in art class, and they hit the singing bowl, and they didn't tell me it was a solar plexus. Maybe it is opening, maybe because I'm, I'm change. I'm trying to change my way of living. I'm trying to be healthier. That's what I mean. Okay. Anyway, because anyway, your so phone turned off. So anyway, you stopped eating beef and you're trying to like live healthier, yeah. decrease off your medication. Oh, that's a sixty thousand dollar. You know. Thing. So you're doing good. You're not having seizures. You're about ready to start bartending school, right? That's yes, exciting. but it's taken forever. I know. Texas State takes forever. They're slow. Yeah, I, better, better I was excited. about to say what town or city we live in, but that was whoo. Oh, it's Cause all right. Because you know how people are. They it's like right. to track you down and then Kinda, they can yeah. murder you and chop you into pieces <laughs> and then tie weights to your each limb of your body and drop you in a lake and just let you sit there in the bottom where a little catfish will eat you a lot. <laughs> I have life. a lot of thinking. Okay, I life. think of a lot of disturbing things. Yeah, everybody, I know, you do. it's because I'm X Y Y. Everyone's X Y, and my autistic brain overthinks everything. And I overthink the thinking. And when I overthink the thinking, that's when my really disturbing thinking comes in. It's like I could think of like a hundred ways to die in one night. Mm. Yeah. I can make it look like an accident. That's a lot of death. I know how to die and make it look like an accident. It sounds really creepy. We talked about that last week. You shared a dream. It's really we disturbing because I talk we talked about dismemberment. Remember? Everyone in my art dream? class hates me at talking about death. Yeah. It's because it makes a it puts a smile on my face. It's that's who I am. I like I like talking about death. Yeah. It's weird. It's like people like shooting games. People like guns. They smile about it. Oh. Anyway, we talked last week. You know, talking about death. We talked. You shared a dream with me last week. We talked about that dismemberment and stuff and. Oh yeah, now you brought it up. I totally forgot about it. That's why I tell you all my dreams. Mm -hmm. I forgot I about that dream. I had like three dreams in a row. It was so fucked up. I mean, I'm like a. Everyone tell. Everyone tells. All my friends know me as like a teddy bear. I'm not a fighter or anything. Right. So I think. It's weird how I think. I think that, that dream because I've been able to kind of sit with it for a little while, and I think you know. To do it. I think those. Yeah. I think that those those people in your dream that were being dismembered were actually aspects of yourself. You know, dismemberment's a normal part of the shamanic. My path. dark side. Possibly, aspects of the self. What Anyways, yeah. So aspects of yourself. I'm, I'm, I don't really know. I just think that it's aspects of yourself, you know, and that dismemberment is a normal part of a shamanic path. It's part of the initiation, the shamanic initiation. Everybody goes through. You should roll your window down. You like this smell? It's fried watermelon. I don't. Everybody goes through <clears throat> death and dismemberment. You know? Remember when I died? That was some trippy shit. Well, that's that why, was some really trippy that's stuff. That's why I brought it up and asked if you wanted to talk about it. I'm ready to talk about it now. Okay, we'll talk about it then. 
Okay, what you want to talk about? You wanted to bring it up. Well, now you, I mean you I brought it back up. You had a near death experience, like an actual. Man, I was seeing I was seeing Native Americans, and that's what I was gonna say earlier when you were talking. But you're like, let me finish. Um, when I stare at people, and you know how I can see in their energy. Uh -huh. Well, I could see their native energy, like their actual. You know when they dress up as paint and they do the tribal stuff. Like their ancestral. Yeah, I could see on their face, and I, it took me it took me years to figure it out. I'm like, I see these symbols on their face, but I'm like, you know, when Native Americans put it over their eyes, you know, I could see who, who's native in their oh. blood. I get the, I could tell if they're Native American. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? I guess, yeah. You can see the ancestral. I mean, I've been trying to connect to it. Now, now that I connected to it, it's like now I can see everyone who's Native American. What do you mean you've been trying to connect to it? Like who taught or told you to do that or how did that even happen? I don't understand. I don't know. I just, you know, you just get this weird feeling where you need to connect to something and you just do it. Okay. So it just comes natural to you. Only you would think that's funny. <laughs> Only you wouldn't think it was funny. <laughs> hey, are we going to get Taco Bell? Yeah, I know. It's funny how I'm trying to watch my diet and I say, oh, are we going to get Taco Bell? Well, I get chicken. I don't get beef. I'm allergic to the beef. It's something in the beef that gets me a severe, like super, super severe anxiety for hours where I can't, I, I shake and I get tremors and I'm like, it's like there's something in the meat. So anyway, I mean, what else? You had a near-death experience? Yes. Do you want to talk about it? I remember coughing up blood and stuff when I got out of the hospital and I was seeing Native Americans dance over me like they got my back. I saw, I saw a chief and I saw a female with like a female with a headdress thingy, the feathers, you know what I'm talking about? The mm, yeah. Little feathers, little feathers. Yeah. And then uh, with like like a like a eagle skull, eagle skulls on the hand. You know what I'm talking about? Eagle skulls. Yeah. It's kind of like voodoo-ish tribal. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's well, like they're doing. I know you doing... have like a lot of shamans. I know a lot of shamans. Well, and don't you think when you were in ICU for those five days that I was reaching out to all my shaman friends and asking them for help? Shit, I don't know. I was in a yes, coma. I was. I I was. I was 100% out. And it was the funny thing is, the doctor says I'm not epileptic, right? And this is where everybody gets the kick, where all my friends think it's kind of funny. They know I'm not epileptic. Then my friend, and when I tell my friends this story, they actually think I'm epileptic after this story because if you're not epileptic, they say it's all in your mind. Now, when I was in a coma for five days, I had seizures nonstop for five days straight. So if I'm not epileptic right. and I'm not, and, and I'm so, in a, okay, so we have to clarify you know what I'm because people aren't going to understand this. You were in a coma, but it was not really, it was medically induced. It's because they were giving you medicines. My head. So they were giving you those two things, which keep you very, very sedated. It's not really technically. Where my blood pressure is like literally 40. The reason they like had 50. to do that is because you're intubated. They have the tube in you, and once you wake up, me and stuff. Yeah. Once you wake up, they, you once you wake up, they try to you try to rip the tube out of your mouth. I don't remember any of that. So they have to keep you. I do remember sedated. that catheter though. So that's it's like a nightmare. so you weren't technically in a coma. You were heavily, heavily sedated with very powerful drugs to keep you. Um, from calm and ripping the IVs and stuff out, I had, out of your mouth. But I what, had six IVs in my arm. And I but woke what up. you're saying is that even in that state of being like in a medically induced coma, you know, the funny thing you is, you're still having seizures. Yeah, they give you not like a, a medication for non-epileptic seizures to relax your mind, right? And now the funny thing yes, is, you're because saying, they're saying I'm non-epileptic, right. of them giving me that medication to stop my mind from doing that. I'm still having seizures. So that just proved all the doctors that I was epileptic. Yeah, but they say that you're not because you've had all the tests. But then that neurologist said in uh, Houston, I also could have non-epileptic uh, covering it's, it epileptic. Bother, it bother, you think that you have epilepsy. I still, you I still, you believe that you do. I mean, I, I still think I do. 
And I mean, it, yeah. I mean, think of it like this: um, when you're a baby, people have seizures. Yeah. And uh, it's a phase. I mean, it could go away in a, in a, in a year. I mean, right. Mine's. It's been seven years, and maybe they're finally going away. Right. All it had to do. I mean, my blood even said I was autistic and stuff. I could qualify for certain things like, like a muscle problems and which I do so now. So I mean, regardless if it's epileptic or psychogenic seizures, it doesn't matter either way. You can you have the power to heal yourself, right? Or do I? I mean, you haven't had a seizure since November, or and, and do it's I? and it's already what March eighth today. Right? So weird. Huh? So what a powerful testimony that you have of healing. That's amazing. Don't you think? Yes. I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, yeah. So we're basically on our destination here. So before we go, you have something to say? Just anything else? Are you ready to sign off? I have an extra chromosome. <laughs>